today we're going to be talking about how to add amazing light flares in Photoshop like so. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. Alright, so it's very simple to do. Let's examine the image for a bit. Where is the light coming from? The light is coming in this direction, right? Top left. So the flare will be in the top left, alright? Or wherever the light source is. Now click on the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient. There you have a very simple gradient. All you need to do, click on this color just click on that gradient once and then choose a gradient which is a color to transparent, any color to transparent. Let's select the second one and we need to change the white color to whatever color that you want. In this, I want yellow. So let's double click on that one and let's choose a shade of yellow. Make it bright and hit OK. We can always go ahead and change the color. Don't worry about that. And as it fades, I don't want it to get white. I want it to get reddish. All right, let's double click on this one and let's choose something like bright red or something like this orangish color that looks fine hit ok once you're satisfied you can always change color hit ok again now change the style from linear to radio there you have the flare and you can move it move it to the source all right and let's increase the scale how big do you want the flare to be so for this example i guess 117, let's keep it 180, that is fine, and hit OK. Now, you want to make sure that this flare does not darken anything. If you go ahead and turn it off, you see these light source were brighter than the flare. So, change the blend mode of this one to screen. When you change the blend mode of anything to screen, it means that that layer only brightens up stuff. That layer will never darken anything. So, change it to screen and voila, have a look. Doesn't that create a wonderful effect? Now you can go ahead and change the colors if you like. All you need to do, just double click on the icon of the gradient fill, opens up the properties and just single click on this one and just double click on this one. Suppose you wanted to change the hue a little bit. All right, just like so. That looks nice. That looks fantastic. Let's change the saturation. Saturation is maximum. We don't need to change it. Hit OK if you're satisfied. Then double click on this one if you want to make it more reddish or whatever color you want to change it to. Some people also keep it blue, something like that, to have an extra kind of camera effect. But we're going to choose red like so. Keep it more reddish. Hit OK. Now, you can also move this according to your desire. If you move it to the left, there will be less of yellow or more of red. If you move it to the right, the opposite will happen. I'll move it to the left just a little bit and hit OK. And there you go, we have added that. Now, to add a little more brightness, we might have to add one more curves adjustment layer. How to do that? Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. And this time, let's brighten it up a little bit. And then Let's go to blues and make it more yellowish. How to make it more yellowish? Decrease the blues, simple, because blue is the opposite of yellow. Always remember, RGB opposite of CMY, red opposite of cyan, green opposite of magenta, and blue opposite of yellow, All right? So let's make it more yellowish, like so. Add more red to the highlights, let's choose red. Add more reds to the highlights, and let's go to green, and let's increase the greens a little bit. The highlights okay now this is all over the photo we just want it in super bright areas so select the mask you guessed it right press ctrl or command i invert the mask take the brush make sure the foreground color is white by pressing x to toggle between the foreground and the background and make the brush bigger softer and just dab once or twice over there you can also go ahead and decrease the flow to somewhere around 20 ish and then just paint in the super bright areas like so now once you have painted in over there, you can just change the values, you can get back to the properties of the curve, just click in here and make it a little less brighter and add a little more red to it and decrease the greens a little bit. That's great. Have a look. Before, after. Adds more of an effect to this. Now at the end, what you can also do, make a group of both of these by holding the control or command, select the other one press Ctrl or Command G. Now decrease the overall opacity if you think it's too much. Okay, Just like so, I think 91 is good. 
and that looks great. You can also go ahead and move it if you want. Control or Command T can move it. If you desire to hit enter if you're satisfied. It looks strange in the in the middle but you can move it. You can also make it smaller if you want to. And there you go. If this was the effect that you were looking for, that's pretty much done. But if you wanted to manipulate the image according to the flare, there's more to it. Okay, so select the background layer again and let's create a gradient map in between them. Okay, so click on the adjustment layer icon and choose gradient map. And as you can see, it's looking strange. It's looking very strange because on the left hand side we have white. So the shadows are painted in white and right hand side is black, which means the highlights are painted in black. So it's strange. Just click once on it. And on the left hand side, let's choose red because the shadows were red. So let's choose something reddish, orangish, something like that. On the right hand side, let's choose yellowish, this color. Okay. Choose something like that. That looks wonderful. Okay. Hit OK. Now change the blend mode of this one to probably soft light. Wow. Let's have a look before, after. And of course, this is too much. Decrease the opacity to somewhere around probably 35 would be a fine number to be at or 30. Make a copy of this one, Control or Command J. And in that copy, change the blend mode again to normal to add that haze. And then decrease the opacity of this one to even more to 4, 10%, something like this, or 7%. Now have a look at this. You have added that extra haze to the image. All right. If you didn't want this, that's pretty much uh, your choice. What you can also do, you can also, instead of doing that, you can also add a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing curves and probably brighten it up in the highlights a little bit and darken up in the shadows and then adding the reds in the shadows by choosing reds and increasing it in the shadows. And you can go this route as well. But that was something new. I wanted to show you that. And you can take go to the blues and increase the blues in the shadows and give that fancy effect. You know how it goes, right? So this is something which you can also do. But I like the gradient map. So there you go. And at this point even, you can always go ahead and change back the colors if it doesn't suit the image. So as you can see, it's looking a little more yellowish. So we'll go back to this one, double click on the gradient fill and change this. Whoops. We clicked in the wrong place. Click cancel again and single click on this one again and double click. Let's change it to a little more red color like so. That looks wonderful. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And there you go. We have adjusted the image. Now it's time for us to move to the second example. And this is a little different. Have a look. The light source is not on the sides. It's somewhere in the middle. And there's a lot of adjustments needed in the image as well. Very similar to the first one, but just a little variation over here. All right. So even in this image, let's go ahead and add a gradient. Click on the adjustment layer and click on gradient. Now gradient fill is different from gradient map. Always remember that gradient fill just fills it. Okay, just fills it. Gradient map maps the colors. It makes the highlights of the color that you want and the shadows of the color that you want. Okay, and the midtones. So you get the idea. Okay, so gradient and then simply change this from yellow. Depends upon the background, depends upon the light source, whatever there is in the image. Okay, and this one a little orangish like so. You can always go ahead and change it, change it from linear to radial and place it over there. Hit OK. And then change the blend mode from normal to screen. We probably should make it a little bigger and change the color now. Okay. Double click on this one and let's make it a little bigger. Something like probably 120 or 130. Let's go with 130 and change the color. It's too yellow. Let's make it more reddish. Hit OK. And this one, that looks good. A little more orangish. OK. Now let's come back to this one. I think it's not bright enough. Let's make it brighter. Let's choose B and take it all the way up. That's good. Hit OK. OK. All right. That looks good. Now in this image, I don't think we need the curves. But if you still want it, we can add that. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. And let's brighten it up a little bit. We don't need to brighten up so much. And let's go to reds, increase the reds a bit and go to the greens. Probably let's try increasing it this time a bit. And blue, let's take down the blues. All right. Now, control or command I, you know the rules. 
take the brush make sure the foreground color is white just paint in some areas maybe a little bit over there go random you can go random you can just paint in haze in a little bit over there here just get fancy with that that looks cool at this point i think we should change the color of gradient fill a little bit but just wait let's adjust the image first and then see whether a change is required or not select the background image and then create a new curves adjustment layer whatever is your favorite let's create gradient map i like the gradient map choose gradient map and again the dark areas to be red okay and the bright areas to be yellow depending upon your lights and shell okay okay change the blend mode from normal to soft light and then adjust it again so click on it again and you can change the red if you want to you wanted to change the hue make it more orangish like so you can do that as well okay and the yellows as well let's choose a little okay that looks good hit okay and then decrease the opacity of this one Again, to somewhere around that looks good 37 looks good uh, maybe we'll go 30 sometimes we go overboard let's make a copy of the same and then change the blend mode of this one to normal to create the haze and decrease the opacity even more something like this and at this point you can also go ahead and add curves there's no hard and fast rule that if you add curves you don't have to use gradient map it is your tool you can go crazy with this do anything you want just play all right Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. And at this point, I think we should add a little blue to the shadows. Let's make the shadows a little darker. Make the highlights a little brighter like so. Yeah, that's looking good. And then let's go to blue and let's add a little blue to the shadows like so. That looks wonderful. Let's take it down like that. Hey, that looks nice, doesn't it? All right. So have a look before curves, after curves. Add that extra effect to this. Now at this point, as I said, if you want to change the color of the gradient fill, you can always do that. Just double click on it and make the yellow, whoops, cancel. Click it again and then make it more oranges, like so. Okay, hit okay and hit okay again. Increase the scale, let's increase it just a bit, like so, 155 looks great. Or let's say 150, okay. We don't want it on the face, so there's always a mask. Select the mask, take the brush, decrease the flows to somewhere around 5% or 10% upon it's your choice and make the brush softer. And with black, just paint on in over the face. And have a look at this. Isn't that wonderful? Paint back in some areas. I want a little bit highlight over there, right? So there you go. That's how you do it. Let's paint back away the hair. Okay. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, this is the before. Again, this is the before, and this is the after. And as always, I would always say it, if you think it's too much, decrease the opacity. Select the first one, hold the shift, select the last one, just the last adjustment layer, and everything in the row will be selected, and then press Control or Command G. And you can go ahead and decrease the overall opacity if you want to, but I like it at 100. There you go. So that's how to create light flares and haze in Photoshop. Very simple to do. First of all, create a gradient fill, not a gradient map. Once you create a gradient fill, you can change the colors to your liking and change the style to radial. And once the properties are open, you can always go ahead and move that circle anywhere you like, that light flare. And you can choose the scale, the size of the light flare. After that, make sure to change the blend mode of that one to screen because you don't want to darken something. Screen is a blend mode which makes sure that you're just making it brighter and not darkening anything. Then you can go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer, make it even more brighter, add yellows, add reds, whatever color that you like and mask in the super bright areas. After that, if you want, you can adjust the image according to the light flare using tools like gradient maps and curves, whichever is your favorite. So that's all there is. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would take this moment to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and making Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.